Welcome to Big Blend Radio with Nancy and Lisa, the Big Blend mother-daughter travel team and publishers of Big Blend magazines. You just heard Bright Song, Bright Rain by Magic Music. It's one of the best band titles ever. Um, and, you know, it's really exciting um, because... A lot of people remember bands uh, from the Boulder Revolution, Boulder, Colorado, and um, this band lived in a camp up in the mountains, and uh, they were known for playing their songs. They're very positive songs, beautiful harmonies, as you've heard, and, um, you know, they did have some good success. However, they never signed a record deal. Apparently, wow. it has to do with shoes. Anyway, yes. and eventually, in 1975, broke up, which is really sad. Um, but one of Magic Music's greatest fans is Emmy-nominated TV writer and producer Lee Aronson, uh, known for his work with The Big Bang Theory, Two and a Half Men, Murphy Brown. Cool. Um, yeah, but he went <laughs> he went to the University of Colorado. This is prior to 1975 when he moved to LA, um, and he was introduced to the music of Magic Music. And Nancy, you know about that kind of music out in a university. You I go, love it. Like Griffith Park in yes, LA. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Back in your day, yeah. Uh, so much fun. What do you mean my day? Of your day of, <laughs> of, of youth of that. Oh, I'm going to get in oh. trouble. But anyway, anyway, Ouch. I said Lee is one of the band's <laughs> greatest fans. And what he did is he decided to track down the original band members. I mean, we're talking four decades later and chronicle their story in the film 40 Years in the Making, the magic music movie and i'm telling you everybody uh this is something you're going to definitely want to see it's out in theaters now um and you can keep up with it go to the website magicmusicmovie.com and um, it's also coming to the orchard on september 4th so uh, this is going to be accessible for everyone welcome lee how are you I'm terrific thanks for it's having so me on we're excited um we want to watch the movie again it's it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Music movies Hi. are one of our favorite things, and um, this one totally, like, it was so cool to even just get the history of Boulder, because I've always, you know, talked with friends who lived in Boulder, and it's like, man, that's where I would have wanted to grow up, and, and see, I know it's changed, but um, just learning the history of Boulder, and it's, it's part of that music revolution out there, what was that like? Tell us about that. That must have been so awesome to be part of. Well, yeah, it was, look, for, a, for a, a, an 18-year-old kid, uh, it was incredibly exciting to hit Boulder in 1972 and you know, just see all the uh, all the hippies and uh, and street people and you know everything that was going on there. It was uh, it was a very exciting time to be a kid and uh, I loved it. Yeah. Yep. I want to. I, I just wanted to move there, and I wanted to go live in their camp, yeah, <laughs> you know, Magic that. Music Camp. I mean, they really, truly went for it as being like, we're going to be authentic hippies. If we're going to be hippies, we're going to be hippies, and we're going to live in a commune. We're going to live out in nature. And it seems to me that even to this day, that they really have always chased being out in in nature in some way and being part of the natural world. Yeah, a, lo a lot of them have kept those values. Um, you know, back back in the day, they were the coolest, hippest things I'd ever seen, and and they were uh, the the poster people for you know for for Boulder hippiedom. <laughs> I like that Boulder hippiedom. You gotta have, you gotta have yeah. like um, the VW bus with flowers on it. Yeah, they had a lot of buses. <laughs> they had those big school buses. They had they had school buses. They lived in teepees and cabins, and you know it was. It was just too cool to even discuss. That's just so much fun. I love that you. I want to do it now. I know, me too. It's like I'm like this is this. I want to do this, but their music. Um, I, and that's one of the you know the highlights for me is discovering their music. And we were just able to play "Bright Song, Bright Rain," and I think it's great because I look they they actually did do an album. I, you know, I know that you went. I want to talk about you getting them all together and and having a concert and making this this amazing film. But they did also create an album, right? Studio. Well, years later, in 2013, um, a few of the original members got together with some other people and re-recorded uh, the old songs in a manner that did not match the style that they were originally performed and recorded in. Um, and they put out an album, uh, came out in 2015, and uh, it it. it it's fine, you know, but it's it's not it's not the sound I remembered. And what I was trying to do was I was trying to 
I was trying to recapture that. I wanted to hear it the way I remembered it. And to do that, I basically had to get the original members together and get them to play, which is what I did. They were all over the country, or not even in the yeah. country. <laughs> One's in Mexico. Yeah. You know? One was so, in Mexico, yeah. Oh, wow. And to get them together, and then, of course, you know, you know, you know, they're, they're just these, their music is very, very positive and uplifting. And mm -hmm. you know, the harmonies, it just makes you feel like, okay, you know, things can, we can do this, you know, in the world right now. And I think we need to hear their music right now. I feel like we, our history is recycling itself and um, we need to have the music to, to ease that. And when you're listening to it, I just feel like, okay, you know, we can have this music again, but I love just learning about a new band that I really didn't know. So I'm, I'm very mm -hmm. thrilled about that. Um, but when getting them together in this, they're positive, you know, they're fun. And they really had, you know, the integrity of like, okay, man, everybody's going to be cool. Um, but then things do happen as in every single band. It's, you know, it's like a big marriage with more than another person. And, you know, right. and things start right. to change of what people want to do. And so people, they did eventually start splitting up and, and you know, having a, lot, a different life with families. And well, they had, yeah, they had a lot of integrity. They, they really cared much more about making music than they did about, you know, making it big or being successful. And they had a lot of opportunities because they wanted to do it their way um, and not the record company's way. Mm -hmm. And I think they felt because the era you know, the era was such a hopeful one, you know, it, it seemed like anything was possible, you know, and, and, and everything was possible. They, I think they felt that eventually it would be possible for them to do it their way. But what actually happened was the moment passed, the era passed, um, mm -hmm. the music industry changed, uh, it, disco and hard you know, heavy metal came in. And that was it. You know, there was no place for them anymore. Mm. And of course, it had to do with shoes. <laughs> <laughs> shoes, yeah. Well, spoiler alert. Let's 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 not spoil. I know. Does everybody watch for the shoes? It's all about the shoes. <laughs> don't, don't tell anybody, but it's all about the shoes. <laughs> yeah, it? shoes are important. Apparently, um, yeah. you know. You, and what was it like getting to meet them and, and getting to know them? And because you know, it it. It, they're like they're like the coolest jam band. It it it's right. kind of been fun meeting them. Well, uh, you know, back in the day, I was just a fan. I didn't have any personal relationship with them. You know, I I, I would have loved to have been invited onto the bus, you know, with them, uh, but that never happened. So years later, uh, you know, part I guess part of my quest, my personal quest, was to finally get invited onto the bus, and it was very oh. cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 40 years later. Wow. wow. And then getting you them know. all together. That is the thing, too. I mean, it's like getting mm -hmm. them all into a room, getting some to talk to each other. And I don't, it's true, we don't want to just spoiler to go out there, but getting them all together to even perform again. Um, and then they have these parties, man. I, now, is everybody allowed to go to those parties, like those annual, you know, <laughs> jam sessions? The copper mean? stock? Yeah. Yeah. I that, go. No. <laughs> Those are like, um, they're every four years, or they have oh, okay. been every four years. And, um, you know, they're, they're at uh, somebody's house, you know, up in the mountains, uh, you know, way the hell away from everything. And the people who show up are all the people who are part of the Magic Music Extended family. You know, it really was surprising to me how, how much... Uh, so many people had kept in touch and connected to each other over mm -hmm. the years. Mm -hmm. Well, Chris, or and also known as Spoons, uh, Daniels, he's actually, he's really put together quite a resume of what he's done musically. I mean, he just kept on with what he wanted to do. and, and really Right, he's working. the one who kept on doing it. Yeah. Wow, amazing. And, then, and that's the oh, way, that's the way I found them, was... Um, through finally Google, you know, Googling magic music and coming up with nothing but singing magicians, I finally Googled magic music Boulder, and I came up with an article about Chris Daniels and the Kings, and which then led me to contact Chris, which led me to, you know, everybody else and the movie. I Amazing. like all their names. Okay, yeah. so 
Chris's spoons. We've got Rob Galloway. Uh, Puna. Puna. <laughs> What's his name. Puna. That's, That's a good one. Uh, <laughs> I like that. And so he was he was the first um, bass, bass player. player. Yeah. And he went. He did a lot of good stuff too. I mean, through his career. Yes. Amazing. He, I mean, it's he played with Navarro. Wow. Mm. Leftover salmon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a that's it, it. And leftover salmon, man. We had uh, Brian, uh, what's called the Borgo Band. Brian uh, Borgo. I'm going to get his name wrong because that's why his name is Borgo, <laughs> the band. Um, he played with Eric Deitch from um, Leftover Salmon, and he just mm-hmm. recorded an album with them. And he's in Colorado. I think there is something interesting about Colorado's music scene. Oh, you know, Denver and Boulder. There's something going on, and I feel like it's. I don't know if there's like a something happening again. Did you pick up that when you went to Boulder? Did you go anywhere surrounding that um, live music? I was pretty focused. I was pretty focused just on what I was doing, but I had people telling, you know, people on the crew and everything telling us about, you know, how you could see the influence um, of magic music in, in bands like leftover salmon and Mm -hmm. bands I'd never heard of trampled by turtles. (laughs) <laughs> I, you know I, I like that name. back in the day where where, where the, the musicians really did have nicknames and and the band names were cool and the bands themselves <laughs> were like real album bands. covers yeah you know i mean they did like we we have a thing about album covers in recent bands and some of um, the musicians that we interview and the album covers are just not as fun as they used to be Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it, I, I don't think anything's as fun as it used to be, is it? <laughs> Shall I ask what's missing? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, look, but now listen, I've got to say, like, um, your artwork for for the documentary here is like it's perfect. Mm-hmm. It you know, mm-hmm. it takes you right back, and you feel pretty happy when you look at covers like that. It takes you right to a place. <laughs> yeah, Griffith Park, yeah. <laughs> Griffith Park, LA, every Sunday. You you just go there, and there would be all these musicians, and they all played different kinds of music, and everybody was having fun. And some people didn't wear clothes, and some people had fun stuff for them, and other people just drank. And the cops left you alone, and it was just so <laughs> cool. It was the coolest thing. I don't think Griffith and Park was like that. No. No, I don't. No, think it's not. I drove past the other day. Oh, I don't know. Like that anymore. Did you ever go there? Doing like for the I, music? No, I I didn't get to LA and I got to LA in 1977 and I stayed on. Uh, I was I was like West Hollywood, uh, staying at the Tropicana Motel where oh. that music scene was going on. The mm-hmm. Ramones stayed there. Blondie yeah. stayed there. Tom Waits was living there. Oh. You know, that's cool. <laughs> that is cool though. Like seriously, um, you know, what about? Okay, I want to go through the rest of the names here. We've got. Okay, we've got Lucky. Okay, Wilbur. Lucky. Real Lucky, Wilbur. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He, he's just like so cool and fun to watch. <laughs> like I, I love watch. I, all of them telling their stories. They, they gave us the giggle oh, so because funny. they're so mm-hmm. laid back and how they're telling them. Like it's just, I don't know, man. We, they were give, him and <laughs> <laughs> him and Toad. Um, they, <laughs> both, they gave me the giggle. <laughs> Toad is yeah. cool. <laughs> and his flute playing oh my wow. god that's like a signature sound doesn't he have chops man isn't that oh, amazing yeah. and and his flute how he got it was like a whole like oh okay i'll just start it's, doing this you know, you know? how hard mm-hmm. it is to make a flute a cool instrument he does yeah oh, yeah man. that's a man i'm so glad he's in it because it's like wow i mean could you imagine if you know <laughs> Magic Music and Jethro Tull got together for a jam session. Ooh. Yeah, well, I, 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 I call Magic Music Crosby, Stills, and Tull. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly That's really it. really a good way it's of saying exactly, it. exactly, because their harmonies are, like, amazing. Yeah. Beautiful. That is just, I'm, I'm like, how did they do all that? Uh, we also have Flatbush. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. and, uh, that's a good name. Yeah. Lynn, uh, he was on guitar, right? And, um, yeah, yeah. and Flatbush got his name, uh, after, uh, believe it or not, uh, a film called the incredible Mr. Limpet in which Don Knotts played a guy who turned into a fish and he met a crab underwater that called him Flatbush because he was from Brooklyn. 
And that's how <laughs> Flatbush got his name. This is the, what was told to me anyway. This is awesome. The, the names are, are great. And CW, man, wow, he's got an, a story. That's a <laughs> CW. Wow. That's, CW stands for cobwebs. I know, man. He, I know. <laughs> cobwebs. Yeah, that's it. Got it like that. And then Das, how did he get his name? Das, um, yeah. I think uh, for Ram Das. Okay. I, oh, okay. I think that he was the, the, the stoic Thank one. You. Yeah, that's it. There you go. Wow. It's just amazing stuff. I mean, this, is, this must have been fun. What was it like going from writing for TV and, and, and being in that side of production to going, okay, now I'm going to make a documentary and then trying to get, because some of the techniques, I know Nancy does some video work. And we were looking yeah. at this going, man, that was really smart. I know. Because like, trying I'm to go, failing. taking things from the past and trying to get historic things and put it together is, is never the easiest thing on earth. So that must have been fun to put together. Mm -hmm. and, and well, it was, quite a, it was quite a challenge, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, with, with writing scripted entertainment, you know, whether it's sitcoms or films, you, the, the hard work comes before you shoot. Uh, you have to figure out what the structure is, what the story is. Uh, with the documentary, the shoot is fun, and then the hard work comes when you've got 100 hours of footage and you've got to craft it into something coherent. And it, it took a year and a half of editing to come up with this mm -hmm. film. Wow. Well, wow. I, I'm, I'm stealing some of your techniques. I know. <laughs> We're just like, that is so super cool. When, when you're getting them all together, how long did that take? Because it's like... That's like a Nancy Drew novel, <laughs> or you can be the like Hardy Boys. I'll, I'll let you be a boy. <laughs> there you go. That must have been like a challenge too, just trying to get them all and find them. Well, it 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 once you know once we started, um, you know the first the first thing was uh, we brought them to Boulder, and and CW wasn't part of that, and DOS mm -hmm. was reluctant to participate in that. And then we went around the country to visit everybody where they lived. Um, and that's when we got CW back in the fold. And then we back, went back to Boulder to do the concert and was still hoping that Das would, uh, would uh, participate. And whether or not he does is something you need to see the film to find out. Cool. Would you consider doing um, another film of this kind of thing where you um, even even if the band made it and was famous, go back and, and just kind of take them from the beginning. Well, with end. you know, with uh, with famous bands, no, I, I mm -hmm. it, because that all those stories are basically the same. You know, you've watched yeah. a few episodes of Behind the Music, you've seen them all. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I think uh, I, I think what was interesting about this film was it was you know, not just about the band, but it was about a, a, a city and a generation mm -hmm. and um, and its effect on people, you know, not not exclusively, you know, their struggles. But, you know, if they hadn't affected me, there, there would have been no movie and it affected a lot of people, you know, mm -hmm. who all showed up for the concert in Boulder. Mm. I, I didn't know that about. Bold. I, I just didn't know. I, you know, when you always hear about Woodstock and, and then like things mm -hmm. coming after that, but I never realized what was, and there was some interesting, <laughs> that, what, I didn't, that one magazine, I didn't even know was there, but um, it is just so interesting what happened in Boulder. And I was like, wow, that is so cool that there's all these festivals. And I know Telluride does a lot of cool stuff, but um, what do you think? Well, Toad said, Toad said Boulder is where Woodstock went. Okay, yeah, that's right. That's right. And, and continued because they've tried yeah. to do Woodstock concerts now. And, and I mean, I remember one thing a girl got raped and there was like drama. Like it just it didn't change. So the attitude of the country's changed. And, and that's right. That, yeah. That's, you know, a few years of really positive and happy and freedom. Just now I, I feel like you know, we've been pushed into a cage now. It's wow. not like that, and it's too bad. Mm -hmm. it's, I I wish our young people of today would have what we had. Mm -hmm. 
you know, because you really didn't yeah. feel like even if even if you were poor, you you never felt like you were like there was stigma to it or that you were less than anybody else. You felt like you could fix it. Mm. You know, there was yeah, it's because you didn't have Instagram. <laughs> you know, you didn't oh, yeah, you, well, you didn't have you you weren't having your nose rubbed into other people's so-called successes every day. You know, uh, I, I think it's it's incredibly toxic to, you, you know, everybody now in the world has to compare themselves to everybody else in the world. And their dinner, you know. Yeah. And, 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 <laughs> right. and, and kind of the idea of, oh, it's okay to call somebody a name, even if you've never mm -hmm. met this person, just do it and you can do it, you know, in public, you can do it mm -hmm. online and, and whoopee. And anonymous. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, or and even use your your you know your own name. You well, know, some people just you know I'm shocked. I I stay off. Of well, that's their brand. brand. That becomes their brand. Yeah. is you know being the person who'll say the outrageous thing. Exactly. Well, I think what's interesting too about the band, you know, Magic Music going, they kept they they did two different camps, right? Um, and they kept trying to get to a place where they really were like isolated from the city part of things. Mm -hmm. Nancy and I are very right. much like that. We really, we don't want people coming over. Like, you know, we're, I mean, mm -hmm. we're not being rude. <laughs> we're not like that, but you know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. there's a, there's a, you, you really just want to see the deer and, and the birds and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. That's just who we are personally. So we really identified with them. We're like, that's where I, we would live like that. Yeah, and we have in Africa, but not here. And it's, and it's really, it's interesting to me with, you know, this conversation between the two of you, Nancy and, and Lee, is going back to how we've changed now, but they were even feeling it then, that incessant need to be out in, in nature, like out in the, you know, away yeah. from, and at that time. So there was already that bustling city kind of thing and, you know, moving forward. But I think this is going to open people's eyes, like for me and ears, to a new a new band that we've never heard of, you know? Well, so but, you know, that's one of the cool things is that the music scored exclusively with tracks that they recorded in the 70s that were never released. And uh, the sound album, September 3rd, songs available, and one of them we played, Sunrise Rain, the other is called Teeter Sigh, and this, you can get that now on Spotify or Apple Music or, you know, all the other places. And that's another fantastic song that you should check out. Uh, but yeah, that this is this is music that is new. I love this. I love this. So now, are you? I know you're you're traveling around now because there's a lot of film screenings happening. And mm -hmm. so, can people contact you and say, "Hey, we want to, you know, have this at our campus or, you know, at our music school or our city, our local." City. Um, I, that's all. Everything is possible. Um, you can go to uh, magicmusicmovie.com, and there's contact information there. Mm -hmm. okay. And you can also sign up for the newsletter to learn where it's going to be screening and when, all that stuff. Awesome, yeah. awesome. And and uh, and awards and and film festivals, that kind of thing's happening too, right? Well, we've done. Uh, we're done with the film festival circuit. Um, we, we are now in theatrical release. We opened in New York on Friday, and uh, we are opening in Los Okay. This lost coming Friday. Uh, okay, we, we lost you there for a second. Okay, so everyone, uh, just if you go to uh, magicmusicmovie.com, that's the best thing to do, and uh, it's really cool. And you can see the poster art and all that good stuff too. And um, see the trailers trailer all that. Yeah, yeah go check that out but really go see this it is i mean it's worth it man i know i, I want to watch it again because <laughs> just to see the music and you know just i just get this vibe of you know another place because that's the other thing is the sense of 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 place of, of what boulder was back in the day and now i mean because now it's a state park where they camped right that was the coolest thing yeah so now it's park. yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's what we do. We travel from park to park across the country. I'm like, this is a park movie. We like yeah. that. We like that. So now I want to know, cool. would you would you go on the road in a school bus with the band? You know what? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think even despite my fantasies, um, I was too middle class even then to actually, you know, give up everything 
and yeah. live in a school bus in, in the middle of the winter. Uh, I'm yeah. certainly not about to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's your next project? Um, catching my breath. And um, I honestly don't, I didn't know I was going to do this movie before I decided to do it. And uh, I have no idea what I'm going to do next, but I imagine if I keep up in the morning and showing up for life, uh, I will end up where I'm supposed to be. Right on. Well, Whoa. thank you so much for making the movie because yeah. I got a new band that I'm, I'm a huge fan of. And, uh, and, and again, uh, the movie is just fantastic. I know that every musician we know, I'm going to be knocking on their doors. You need to watch this and music lovers. But I think a lot of musicians, especially uh, from that, you know, that were also like in university at that time, um, I think they're going to love this. You know, there's just oh. that, that that's going to be, it's awesome. So everybody, I really imagine, appreciate Go ahead. I appreciate your help. Oh, you bet. We bet. We, we love this. Again, everyone, magicmusicmovie.com, and it's called 40 Years in the Making, the Magic Music Movie. And it, it's like a coming together. It's really a movie about coming, coming, you know, finding out who you are individually and it's a it's a it's just this amazing you know re reunion show <laughs> that's what I want to say it's like about reuniting and playing really good music um and we want to thank our sponsors today uh the National Parks Arts Foundation because you know it does it does have a part about parks and <laughs> so we have to do this and they love musicians uh so the National Parks Arts Foundation creates unique artist in residence programs uh, in national parks. So if you're a musician, an author, a filmmaker, a writer, you could stay in a park for a month while you create um, from the park, which is really amazing. So check it out at nationalparksartsfoundation.org. And we want to thank our listeners for joining us here on Big Blend Radio. We air Sunday through Friday. Check it all out at bigblendradio.com. Thanks so much for joining us, Lee, and safe travels as you go around to different screenings. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. You take Thank care. Bye-bye.